when I started to hear about climate change, I understood that I needed to do something about it. And the best way for me to contribute as an engineer, I felt, was to work on energy systems and low carbon transitions. And so we want to try and ensure that the transition to a decarbonised system is fair and affordable. It's critical that we have multiple people working together and also working across multiple agendas. Collaboration is absolutely key. This problem is too large and too multifaceted for any one discipline or organisation to tackle on their own. What do energy networks have to offer or to say about this particular problem? Many people feel that energy networks are actually a barrier to our transition to net zero. And what we're looking to do is change them, not just so they're not a barrier, but to make them a driver. We do that through collaboration through interdisciplinarity and through building diverse communities who can tackle those challenges. So networks are that transportation mechanism that gets the energy from where it's made to where it's needed. So it really support the way that we live. It doesn't matter where you are on the network, we're all entitled to having that power 24-7. If you look at our energy networks and just take electricity networks, for example, if you put the electricity networks in the UK end to end, they would span from here to the moon and back. And most of those energy networks are 30, 40, 50 years old. The Supergen Energy Networks Hub is a national research centre trying to make the energy networks fit for a net zero future. By looking at local, industrial and national scales, the hub gain a better understanding of what they need to do to achieve this. At different scales, different network solutions are required, but all of those scales are important if we're going to get to net zero. So we need different solutions in different places. It's not going to be entirely the same everywhere. And how do they all fit together as a low carbon jigsaw puzzle for the UK and internationally? We're at the Bristol Digital Futures Institute here, and this is a socio-technical digital institute. It looks at how we develop new digital technologies taking society into account at inception. And one of the things that they've got here is some fantastic digital twin and reality emulator capabilities. Bristol University is a partner in Supergen, helping BDFI to maximise the benefits of their net zero initiatives. This is a very different way of looking at doing digital technology creation. It involves bringing in engineers and social scientists right at the very start of the sort of innovation process from the very earliest stages of conception and involving them all the way through the innovation life cycle. And we do that because we realise that we live in a socio-digital world. Digital technologies are everywhere and they're impacting on our lives, they're impacting on our health. And in order to make sure that technologies of the future are fit for purpose, we need to involve different types of voices in the discussion about the creation of digital technologies. What we've been able to do here, which is fantastic, is integrate solar generation into this heritage building and also we're using second life automotive batteries to provide us with an energy storage capability. We're also taking the heat from our data center. We're using that to heat the building, but we're also now able to export that into a district heating system locally. By optimizing these systems, Supergen can learn from the work being done here and disseminate that learning across the university and other sectors. What we're looking for is what's the sweet spot between low cost, low carbon, and grid-friendly operation for a microgrid like this. So one of the really big challenges for net zero is how do you decarbonize heavy industry? And we're working at the Tisley Energy Park in Birmingham, which is a collaboration with Birmingham University. By working to find low carbon energy solutions, the industrial center can continue to provide employment for the UK economy with less impact on the environment. Tisley Energy Park is the land where our 300-year-old family business have been based for the last 170 years. We've been consolidating the property so that the manufacturing sits on a much smaller footprint and we have been developing an estate with lots of companies that are focused on the decarbonisation of heat, power and waste and recycling. So what we are looking to do as part of Supergen is to use Tisley 
as a learning platform and Supergen is looking, as we've described, from the national all the way down to the local. We're in the Birmingham Energy Innovation Centre. This building was constructed to take elements of the research that the university does in collaboration with industry and provide a platform for it to scale up at industrial scale. We want to learn what the energy networks there can do to help decarbonise that industrial park situation. We have the opportunity here to breathe new life into an area with the green growth economy developing in the way it is, presents huge opportunities for creating jobs and employment. Northern Paragrid are an example of a large scale energy system as they serve millions of customers across the northeast of England and Yorkshire. Today we're at Burness. It's the substation that's just been built for our Micro Resilience Project. It's a new innovation project that we've got where we've got some battery storage to enable our customers to stay on supply in the event of a fault. Normally over a winter period we'd have two, possibly three storms. This year so far we've had about ten storms and they're not just localised across the whole of the network. Micro Resilience is very much what it says in the title. It is a small amount of resilience that we're providing for our more remote customers in this instance. It is a unique opportunity to gain some learning from these remote sites. By putting these battery storages in, it means that we will use less generators on the network as well on default conditions. It's got to be better for the environment overall. The whole idea is to start small, get big. It, it certainly does have legs in terms of where we can go with this. We can use energy storage mediums in terms of resilience. If we're going to decarbonise by 2050, we do expect that a lot of the current energy demand in the form of gas will need to move to a form of electricity or other alternative fuels. The energy transition to a low carbon future could require our electricity systems to move double the amount of electricity than they do currently. Meaning optimising the capabilities of our energy networks will be critical to this transition. It's really important that we take action now because time is running out. We are behind on our net zero commitments, so we're playing catch up and it's incredibly important that we accelerate our efforts in net zero to avoid catastrophic climate change. I believe that the time is now, that we need this, society needs it, industry needs it. And the net zero aspects of this, which Supergen are involved in, is extremely important. The decarbonisation without knowing has also made our business more competitive. It will give you insights into solutions that will be critical for the future. Supergen definitely makes a difference. We've made a difference across a whole range of industries at different scales. Local scale, like here in Bristol Digital Futures Institute. Industrial scale, like at the Tisley Energy Park. And then at a national scale with Northern Power Grid. Obviously, the reduction of fossil fuels on the network, we can't always guarantee that the sun's going to shine or the wind's going to blow. So we do need this pocket of resilience on the network to help with that 